Music History Talk with Grant Johnson, Season 1, Episode 1, George Philip Tellerman. Hello and welcome to Music History Talk with Grant Johnson. I'm Grant Johnson. I hope you all are doing good today. Welcome to the first season and the first episode of Music History Talk with Grant Johnson. I am very excited to start up this new series inside of Musician Talk with Grant Johnson. In this series, I will be sharing my love for music history with you all. I don't know how many episodes will be in each season, but we are going to figure that out together. I hope you are ready for the fourth season of Music History Talk with Grant Johnson. If you didn't listen to last week's episode of Musician Talk with Grant Johnson, you should go do that. I talk about some updates on my life, talks uh, updates about my social medias, updates on my podcast, and updates on some new projects I'm working on right now. With saying all of this, with each episode of Music History Talk with Grant Johnson, there will be videos up on my YouTube channel going into details on music on, with, from the composer, from the instrument, or from the era I did a podcast episode on. These videos will be going up throughout the weekend. I'm going to be trying to get the first video of going into detail about the music of the episode on Friday. With school and everything, I'm going to try to get it up on Friday, but I not, might not be able to finish all the editing before Friday. But they're going to, all the videos will be up before the next episode of Music History Talk with Grant Johnson will be up. The, in the first episode of Music History Talk with Grant Johnson, I will be talking about a German Baroque composer of George Philip Tellerman. Let's get into the first, uh, first season, the first episode of Music History Talk with Grant Johnson. Okay, let's ta- start talking about George Philip Tellman. George Philip Tellman was born on March 14, 1681 in Malenburg, Brandenburg, also known as Germany. He was a son of a Protestant minister and got a good education. Both his parents came from a very religious background. His family didn't want him to go into music, go into go into music professionally. He soft taught most of all of his instruments he played. At the age of ten, he was given singing lessons and keyboard studies for two two weeks. At the age of 12, he taught himself how to play three other instruments. During that time, he also composed his first opera at the age of 12. He also was able to master playing the violin, the flute, the zinthor. That is kind of like a harp, but not quite a harp. It's a, like more like a hand harpish instrument in the keyboard. During this time, his mom f- forbids him to study music any further. Further, this didn't stop him from studying music more on his own. With his family telling him not to keep on studying music, he used composers to help him study for writing his own works. He studied compositions by, sorry if I mispronounced some of these names, August Tano Stefanin, Johann Rosimo, Corelli, and Antonio Cardella, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced any of those composers' names. After his studies at Hildesheim Gymnasium, sorry if I mispronounced that again, his mother insisted on him studying in law. In 1701, he started at Lisbeth University to study law. He never had an intention to putting music to the side because he stopped at Holly on the way to Lisbeth to meet a young composer of George Frederick Handel. And that would come back into play later in his life. During his time in Lisbeth University, he found that music was what, really what he wanted to do as a career. After his first year at Lisbeth University, he thought about changing his studies to language and science to help him with 
being a better composer and musician. During his first year in Lisbeck, he wrote music for two churches and also founded Kalingam Musicum, where he performed his music weekly in performances. After he left his studies at Lisbeck, he became the director of Lisbeck Opera House and a canal of one of his churches. Okay, let's talk about George Philip Tillman's life after Lisbeck. I'm going to call this part of his life Frankfurt life. Um, even though he had, I'm going to be talking about a little bit m- more, a uh, little bit before his time in Frankfurt in this section, but this section is mostly going to be about Frankfurt life. At the beginning of his music career, he worked as Lisbeck's opera house director. He was also serving as the organist at the university chapter. This lasted from 1701 to 1705 before he moved on to his next jobs. After that job, he was working as at two courts, one in Sora, conducting the court orchestra for Count Endelman II, that is now Poland, in 1705. Um, during this time, he was studying a lot of French music and started visiting other European courts in the cities. After that, he became the concert master to Duke Johann Wilmer of Sexton Isnick, Isnich, sorry for my pronunciation, in 1708 at Isnich. This was where Johann Sebastian Bach was born. 1709, he married his first wife, Alamina Louise Julian Emble, and they had a daughter together in January of 1711. Sadly, his first wife passed away during childbirth. This left Telemann very depressed and distraught. After his wife passing, he took his took a job in Frankfurt. Al- Alamein to take on the job director of Musnik mu- Music. He directed of uh, two churches where he was in charge of town's official music. He also started back up doing Kalimia Musicum that was doing weekly p- public performances. During this time, he also taught six to eight schoolboys and supervised music instruction at the Latin school. In 1714, he got remarried to Maria Katharina Texel, the daughter of a city clerk. They did, they did have nine kids together, eight sons and one daughter. With his time in Frankfurt, he started publishing music that not only made him famous in Germany, but abroad abroad too. He started publishing his music in 1715. When he was on a trip to, sorry for my pronunciation, Ischnitsch in 1716, he was appointed as Kalbmister. He sent new works to to them until 1729 when he left the post. With more announcement that was increasing his stature in following years with Duke Ernest of Gothel allowed him to become the capital for all his various courts. Um, this made him this made much improvement in his situation at Frankfurt. In 1719, on a trip to Dresden for a festival in honor of the newly married Prince Elector Frederick August II and Archduchess Maria Josephine of Australia, Austria, had a reunion with George Frederick Handel and an opportunity to hear operas by Antonio Latina and a collection of violin concertos by Con- Consumisto and virtuous violinist of Johann George Pinnestel. After going to that festival, this pretty much ended his point of being in Frankfurt. 
Okay, now we're going to talk about George Philip Tillman's life in Hamburg. In 1721, he moved to Hamburg to take over the post of Joachim Gönchenbuntum. That was transitioning carry with teaching responsibilities and directorship of Hamburg's five principal churches. With being the cantor, he was doing more than he ever done before. Bef- well, he was required to compose two can- cantatas a week, produce a new um, passion a year, and provide c- occasional works for the church and civil ceremonies. With all the responsibilities he had, he was eager to still fulfill additional commissions from home and abroad. After his first year in Hamburg, he took the directorship of the Col- Kalimica Musicum and the Hamburg Opera at the Ganston Market or Goose Market in English. He ran until closed in 1737. His wife ran up a big debt for gambling, while he was forced to pay it off in 1725. In 1722, he declined an offer to do a musicum authority in Lisbeth to succeed Canal, an organist of the Thomas Church that was promised to him 17 years earlier. This position fell to a famous composer, Johann Sebastian Bach. Um, he also refused to organize a German orchestra at a Russian court in 1729. Tillman and J.V. Gornor found in Dirt Genschner Music Mister, the Faith Music Master, in 1728. This was intended to be a home music lesson that was full of its kind, and it happened every two weeks in the form of a four-page lection, meaning a reading or a lesson. Most of it was, most of the music was by Telemann himself, but others were represented as well. From 1737 to 1738, George Philip Tillman spent eight months in Paris, France, where he secured a 20-year publishing privilege in France that would print more of his music. Okay, let's now talk about George Philip Tillman's later life in 17. Forty, he went on into semi-retirement. He devoted himself to writing theoretical treaties. He also became an avid gardener as well. His friendship with George Frederick Handel continued and corresponded several times. He, um, George Philip Tellman also asked for him for Handel's help in 1750, where he sent a bunch, uh, sent him a list of his most. Pu- um, British publications of Tellman's music during his lifetime, known as the Musical De Table. With his son, with his son's death in 1755, he raised his grandson. When he was 74, he began writing scaled scaled for fun. George Philip Tellman was a prof- prolific composer with amazing body of works in both scale and circle of music. He had over 3,000 compositions, half of them were lost. He wrote 1,043 coach cantatas and setting of passions for each year he was in Hamburg, and in total that was 46. He also wrote trios, operas, keyboard fantasias, flute fantasias, and all kinds of different wind and chamber music during this t- his time. He was also really good friends with Johann Sebastian Bach. I didn't t- talk about that during his life, t- um, in, in any parts of his life, just because I think it deserves it, his, its own little section at, in his later life. Um, Johann Sebastian Bach and George Philip Tellman met when Tellman was in Ischnook being the one of the mass um k- um because Bach was over in another down a couple of cities in Wilmore where he was the organist. Um there was also um 
Johann Sebastian Bach also held a manuscript dating back in 1709 of Telemann's Concerto in G Major for two violins. Um, when he was in, when George Philip Telemann was in Frankfurt, Johann Sebastian Bach named one of his sons, called it Philip Emanuel Bach, his godson. George Philip Tillman was the godfather of one of Johann Sebastian Bach's sons. He was um, going on. He was very mentally sharp until the end of his death. He died at the age of 86. He had a very long life for the time when the time period when he was living. On the on the evening of. June 25th, 1767. His godson, Philip Emanuel Bach, did take over his post in Hamburg. I would like to thank you all for listening to this, the first episode of Music History Talk with Grant Johnson. I'm very excited to be doing this new series inside of Musician Talk with Grant Johnson. I hope you learned something new about new or something you didn't know about George Philip Tellman. If you have any questions or I forgot anything about George Philip Tellman, please message me on Instagram at grant.johnson.music or you can email me at grantjohnsonmusician at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you. Don't forget to check out my YouTube channel where I'll be posting YouTube videos of talking about George Philip Tellman's music. You can listen to musician a new episode of Musician Talk and Music History Talk with Grant Johnson every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can listen to my podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. You can also listen to my podcast on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is Grant Johnson Music. I hope you all have the good rest of your day and stay safe. Until next time, bye!